Hello and welcome to Parish Prayers and Beyond. It's good to be with you here once more on a Wednesday evening as we look at some of the fundamentals of our faith. Uh, now these are things that uh, I would say most Christians would agree on. Uh, these are the fundamentals. These are things that I would say you must believe in order to be a Christian. No, <laughs> it's not little bitty things. Uh, the little bitty traditional beliefs that we all have, I mean, the, you know, those are nice, I guess, but, you know, they're not essential to be a Christian. Uh, and so uh, these are some things that we need to believe. If we are children of God, these are things we must believe about Him and about uh, who He is. Uh, and so we've, uh, I believe we began uh, talking about the Bible, and because from the Bible come our beliefs. Uh, from the Bible come all that we know and believe about God. And so last week, uh, or the week before, we looked at the Bible. Uh, then last week we looked at creation. Uh, and we had Dr. Bill Toller share with us about creation. Boy, that was phenomenal. Uh, if you did not, if you failed to see that one, I, I highly suggest you go back and watch that one uh, because I think you would truly enjoy it. Uh, I think that was the 27th or something like that of July. Uh, but go back and see that if you missed that. Well, today, today we're going to talk about God. Uh, fundamentals of our faith, God. Uh, now I'm going to put these on again uh, so that I can uh, see my words uh, a little bit better and easier uh, so that I'm not just uh, speaking very slowly. <laughs> we want to, we, I don't want to keep you more uh, than you need to be kept in order for us to talk about God. Well, God, who is He? Who is He? Uh, and that's not a rhetorical question. Who is God? I'm waiting for you to answer. Oh, that's right, I can't hear you. Well, I hope that you have an answer to the question, who is God? One of our great Southern Baptist theologian, theologians, uh, E.Y. Mullins, defined God as the supreme personal spirit, perfect in all His attributes, who is the source, support, and end of the universe, who guides it according to the wise, righteous, and loving purpose revealed in Jesus Christ, who indwells in all things by His Holy Spirit, seen ever to transform them according to His own will and bring them to the goal of His kingdom." So there's that. <laughs> now there you go. That's a theologian's definition of who God is. Now he did his best to sum it up, uh, to explain who God is uh, and His purpose through Christ, through His Holy Spirit. But man's attempt to describe God is lacking at best. We need a definition to have a home base to go to when we speak about God. The Bible has many names that refer to God, that describe God. And those names are helpful to us. Those names can help us to know who God is. Uh, I'm going to share some of those with you. Uh, Elohim the one to whom all power belongs. So who is God? He's the one to whom all power belongs. Boy, that's good stuff there. El Shaddai, He is God Almighty. El Elyon, the Most High God. El Alom, the Everlasting God. He's the Everlasting God. There is El Roi, Thou God who seest me, the one who sees me. That's the God. That's God Himself, the one who sees me. And I wish I could just camp there for a few seconds. Can I do that? He is the God who sees you. He knows who you are, and He loves you. He is interested in you, the God who sees me, the God who sees you. I like that one in particular. There are others as well. One is Adonai. It is uh, that that is our, our our God, who is our help in time of need. God, our help in time of need. That's who God is. He is one who is who brings help to us 
in our time of need. You see how all of these are descriptors of God. They're descriptions of who God is. Uh, and that's, sometimes that's the best we can do in trying to define who God is. Uh, there's also the, the name Jehovah, which is tied to other words such as Jehovah Sabbath, uh, the, the God of hosts or armies, Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide. God will provide, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, God who heals. There are many others. When we say God, when we use His name, God is a collective of all of those attributes. All of those attributes come in, should come into our minds when we say the name God. He is all of those things to us, for us. All that He is is bundled into the one name we use, God. When we refer to Him in our minds, we should hear the words healer, creator, sustainer, over armies, uh, provider, the one with all power, almighty, the most high God, the everlasting one, and the one who sees me. That's who we're talking about. That's who we're talking about when we talk about God. We believe because the Bible teaches us that our God is one. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Herschel Hobbes uses the role of a man in his family, relationships, to teach about who God is as an example. Uh, the man has three relationships. He is Father, Son, and Husband. But he's the same person, but he has three different relationships. Obviously, that can be expanded and probably as an example breaks down a bit because it's just so hard to explain the Trinity God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit. It's hard to explain that. But we are reminded that God's ways are above our ways and His thoughts are above our thoughts. We cannot, um, we cannot expect to fully comprehend who He is. But we do not have to give up trying. We do not have to give up trying. God is sovereign. What does that mean? That means God is free from outward restraint. We can't put God in a box. We can't say God can only do this. God can only do that. Or, this is as far as God can work. No, we can't say that. We can't do that because God is sovereign. He, is, he has unlimited rule and control over His creation. He is also omnipresent. He's present everywhere. He is omniscient. He is all-knowing. He knows all because He is everywhere. He is omnipotent. What does that mean? It means He has unlimited power to do anything that is not inconsistent with His nature, His character, or His purpose. He is omnipotent. God. Sovereign free from outward restraint. We can't restrain God. We can't put boundaries around God. We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't say, well, God only works this way. No, we can't say that. We can only look in the past and see how God has moved and what He's capable of by looking at those things, but we cannot say, we cannot limit God. He's beyond our set boundaries that we want to put on Him. I have some questions I'd like for you to think about. How does what you believe about God affect how you live? If God is creator, if God is healer, if God is omnipresent, if, he's, if, he's all, if He knows all, how does that affect how you live your life? Let's think about that. How does the fact that God sees and knows all affect how you live? The fact that He sees everything you do. The fact that He knows everything you do. The fact that He knows your motives. How does that affect how you live? How does the fact that God is Creator affect how you live and see this world? How does that affect how you see the world around you? That knowing that God created it, all, created it all, how does that affect how you view the world? How does the fact that God is all-powerful 
affect how you do life. He's all powerful. If he's all powerful, then does that affect how you do life, how you live your life? Does that affect you in some way? How does the fact that he is there in your time of need help you deal with situations that come your way in life? How, how does the fact that he is there in your time of need, he sees you, he knows you, how does that help you when you're in need in this life? God, hard to, hard to comprehend who he is, and yet the Bible teaches us. And that's what we have to go by. God has revealed Himself through Scripture, through His Word. It's what we have. It's what we need to hold on to when we talk and think about God. We know God is a God who loves us, a God who cares very deeply about us. We know this because He sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross for us. God wouldn't do that if He didn't care about us. God wouldn't do that. He wouldn't go to that extent if He did not love you, love me. He wouldn't do that. So we have a God who loves us, a God who cares, a God who is everywhere, a God who knows all. Who, he, he's the Creator, and He sees you. He sees you where you are. He knows who you are. He knows what you're going through. I hope all of this will affect how you live let it. Let what you know about God affect how you live your life. In just a few moments, we'll have some announcements. We'll have some prayer requests before that. And I ask that you join us in those prayer requests, but then we'll have some announcements following. Thank you for joining us again for Parish Prayers and Beyond. Thank you for being here tonight and tuning in. Until next time or until this Sunday, I'd love to see you here in church. We have Bible study that begins at 945, and then at 1055 we have a time of worship together. We love to worship the Lord, and we hope that you'll join us this Sunday at First Baptist Church. Let me pray for you, would you? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for this day. I thank you for being who you are. I thank you for being a God who loves us, a God who knows us, a God who is patient with us, a God who sees us. And God who is aware of us, a God who wants and longs to walk with us. Father, thank you for that. I pray that we will, we, we will have the same desire to walk with you, Lord, to worship you, to bow our lives down before you, and to offer ourselves up to you. Father, help us to do that. Help us to be comfortable in your arms, O oh God. We pray for our country, we pray for our nation, and we pray for our world situation. And Lord, we ask that you would intervene. Father, that you would bring a sense of peace or real peace. Please, Father, bring peace where there is, needs to be peace in our nation and in our world. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world as they seek to serve you. Lord, they are our brothers. They are our sisters. We are family. doesn't matter what nation, what country they live in. We're part of the same family, your family, Father. So help us to remember that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Again, thank you for joining us for Parish Prayers and Beyond. Stay tuned and join us as we pray together.